So, what's up guys? How do you do? Welcome to Relation Program Users TV. In this class, I'm going to introduce you guys to Listbox. I'm going to provide you guys with a detailed introduction to Listbox in C Sharp. Then, at the end of the day, we're going to write a simple example to put what we, what we will have learned into practice. So, C Sharp Listbox introduction. What is a Listbox? Well, it is actually a Windows Form Control or a Windows Form Component that does provide us or provides users with a selectable list of items okay so it allows us to display a list of items and those items can normally be selected so with the list box you can actually select one or more items now of course in a list box if the total number of items that you need to render suppose they exceed uh, the number of items that can be displayed in the view section or the viewport okay of your list box then a scroll bar will automatically be added okay so a, a scroll bar gets added automatically if you have a larger items uh, than okay than the number of items that can fit comfortably within the viewport so of your list box so one thing that a lot of guys don't know is that list box can actually display multiple columns of data okay and of course in a later tutorial we're going to see how this one okay you can actually do that one by setting the multi column to true you set it to true no by default is always set to false and therefore normally people a lot of people normally use the list box to display data in a single column so if if also you prefer that the scroll bar should always appear then all you have to do is set the scroll always visible to true that will make sure that the scroll bar will always appear so you can also determine how many rows okay of the list box items that can be selected at any given time using the selection mode property so this selection mode property you use it to determine to the number of rows that can the user can actually select okay so if you want to get the selected row in the list box then all you have to do is to use the selected index property so this selected index property it will return to you an integer value that will represent the first selected row okay so the first selected row that it will return for us the that part its index okay so that you can use it to determine the row that's been selected now if no item is actually selected then the selected index will default to negative one However, if you want, you only interested in the selected object but not its index, then the list box also provides us with the selected item property. So this selected item, it gives us, of course, the selected uh, object, okay, that you can work with. Now, you can also get the total number of items rendered in list box using the count property. And in fact, we can perform CRUD operations in the list box with the provided methods it does provide us with methods for example we can use the add method to insert or to add items okay to add items to our list box now to insert we can also insert at a given position using the insert method to remove we can use the remove method or to clear we can use the clear method okay so let's come talk about the list box api definition so it's a public class list box is defined in the system.windows.forms namespace now normally the system.windows.forms namespace normally resides in the system.windows.forms.dll okay so yeah that is the assembly onto which the namespace does reside so as a class list box does derive from the list control so list control is actually an abstract class that belongs to the system the windows that forms namespace as well okay so you can see public class list box derives from system the windows that forms the list control so list control as you said it's an abstract class and its role is just to provide the common implementation for members of the list box as well as the combo box classes by the way we have a tutorial about combo box so you can also check it out so Whenever you are working with the list box, okay, the system, the Windows system will normally automatically draw the list box items for you. So 
these items they get drawn for you you don't have to draw them manually however if you want to have some custom data for example say you have some images or you want to render some cast your list box using custom heights you can actually use uh override the behavior okay using the draw mode property of the list box and then you handle the measure item as well as the draw item events now if you have a large amount of data that you need to be added to a list box of course first performance is is going to be impacted given that with the list box every time you add an item this actually leads to the control the list box control being repainted now as a solution to that one the list box also does provide us with two methods which are very important the begin update as well as the end update method so begin update and end update methods these methods basically allow you to add those data your large amount of data you can add them and after every item is added the list box does not get repainted every time an item is added okay so this of course will make it efficient in adding data now you can also search a list box using the find string as well as the find string exact methods in future tutorials we're also going we're going to see how to actually do all these things okay in step by step manner in in the of course dedicated tutorials to bind items to a list box you can also use not only can you use the add methods that we've seen but you can also use the data source property so having talked about introduced list box it's now time for us to go write some example so let's fire up visual studio and go write a list box example all right so this is what we're going to create let's look at what we'll be creating you can see here we have a one column simple list box if we select an item we're able to get the item that's been selected right here okay so this is it we're going to populate this list box from an array right here and you can see we have our items in our list box let's go write the code so go ahead create your project now once you've created your project i'd recommend that you choose an empty project okay because you're starting from scratch we, we are not using any designer so come to your references the first and foremost we need to add the windows forms reference so come right here search windows then check it okay click or check the windows forms then also we need to add the drawing system the drawing also come check it and then add them now after adding them you're going to be able to see them right here you can see system dot drawing as well as system dot windows dot forms first we come and specify the namespace mr list box is our namespace then we're going to add our three uh imports using the using directive system system dot drawing as well as system dot windows dot forms then we're going to create a static class that we call program now inside this program class the first thing we're going to have is actually a read only list box we're going to instantiate it and then using the object initializer syntax we'll set the location for the list box on our form so of course we instantiate the system to drawing the point struct passing in the x and y coordinates x 30 of course y 70 that's the location for our list box then also the size of the list box size equal to new size with 500 by 400 that will be the size width and height of our list box then we instant we come instantiate our font font equal to new font font family the generic sans serif then of course the font size of 15 so having done that one we're going to come and then create this method that we call populate list box yeah as the name suggests it's going to populate our list box so string nebula we're going to create our data source which is basically a string array so having created the data source we're going to loop through it for each string nebula in nebula then of course my list box the items that add we're going to add our nebulas into our list box now once you've added filled our list box with our data then we're going to have listen to this selected index change event so my list box the selected index change plus equal to we register an event handler so we need to come and create this event handler yeah we come we create it right here and you can see it's taking in an object 
which we call sender and it's also taking in an event tag subject which we call e so all we will come here to do is that we're going to first inside the try catch block we're going to be catching the argument out of range exception now we come and say in selected index equal to my list box the selected indices now selected indices will give us an array so we pass in zero so as to get the first item in that array the first selected index okay now this is in case the user in case the user selects multiple rows in our list box so we'll come and check if selected index is not equal to negative one then will come string name equal to my list box the items selected index the two string we retrieve the name from our list box okay the item then message box the show we show that particular name if we've caught an argument out of range exception then we're going to show it in a message box okay we just show its message property now having done that one we're going to create a form and then we're going to set its properties and then run our application so private static void create form where we instantiate the form once more using the object initializer syntax set the title of the form then set the client size of the form that is the form size then set the background color of the form so having done that one we're going to add our my list box to our controls property of our form then we come we invoke the appropriate list box to populate our list box then we enable the visual styles for our application then we invoke the static run method of our application class passing in the form that you want to run now next we come to our main method this is the entry point to our application so public static void main what we're going to do later is just invoke the create form now having done that one we come and run our project so yeah we run it and here we get our nice list box we can click an item and then get the item that's been selected so this is it guys this is our first list box tutorial now we're going to have some more subsequent tutorials where we're going to look at how to work with uh, list box in different scenarios now like the video share it and make sure you guys subscribe to our channel programming wizards tv like the video share it and also check our website https camposha.info take care i'll catch you in the next class